Law 13. When asking for help, appeal to people's self-interest, never to their mercy or gratitude. Judgment. If you need to turn to an ally for help, do not bother to remind him of your past assistance and good deeds. He will find a way to ignore you. Instead, uncover something in your request or in your alliance with him that will benefit him and emphasize it out of all proportion. He will respond enthusiastically when he sees something to be gained for himself. Observance of the Law in 433 B.C., just before the Peloponnesian War, the island of Corsira, later called Corfu, and the Greek city-state of Corinth stood on the brink of conflict. Both sides sent ambassadors to Athens to try to win over the Athenians to their side. The stakes were high, since whoever had Athens on his side was sure to win and whoever won the war would certainly give the defeated side no mercy. Corsira spoke first. Its ambassador began by admitting that the island had never helped Athens before, and in fact had allied itself with Athens' enemies. There were no ties of friendship or gratitude between Corsira and Athens. Yes, the ambassador admitted, he had come to Athens now out of fear, and concern for Corsira's safety. The only thing he could offer was an alliance of mutual interests. Corsira had a navy only surpassed in size and strength by Athens' own. An alliance between the two states would create a formidable force, one that could intimidate the rival state of Sparta. That, unfortunately, was all Corsira had to offer. The representative from Corinth then gave a brilliant, passionate speech in sharp contrast to the dry, colorless approach of the Corsiran. He talked of everything Corinth had done for Athens in the past. He asked how it would look to Athens' other allies if the city put an agreement with a former enemy over one with a present friend, one that had served Athens' interest loyally. Perhaps those allies would break their agreements with Athens if they saw that their loyalty was not valued. He referred to Hellenic law and the need to repay Corinth for all its good deeds. He finally went on to list the many services Corinth had performed for Athens and the importance of showing gratitude to one's friends. After the speech, the Athenians debated the issue in an assembly. On the second round, they voted overwhelmingly to ally with Corsira and drop Corinth. Interpretation History has remembered the Athenians nobly, but they were the preeminent realists of classical Greece. With them, all the rhetoric, all the emotional appeals in the world could not match a good pragmatic argument, especially one that added to their power. What the Corinthian ambassador did not realize was that his references to Corinth's past generosity to Athens only irritated the Athenians, subtly asking them to feel guilty and putting them under obligation. The Athenians could care less about past favors and friendly feelings. At the same time, they knew that if their other allies thought them ungrateful for abandoning Corinth, these city-states would still be unlikely to break their ties to Athens the preeminent power in Greece. Athens ruled its empire by force and would simply compel any rebellious ally to return to the fold. When people choose between talk about the past and talk about the future, a pragmatic person will always opt for the future and forget the past. As the Corsirans realized, it is always best to speak pragmatically to a pragmatic person, and in the end, most people are, in fact, pragmatic. They will rarely act against their own self-interest. Keys to Power In your quest for power, you will constantly find yourself in the position of asking for help from those more powerful than you. There is an art to asking for help, an art that depends on your ability to understand the person you are dealing with and to not confuse your needs with theirs. Most people never succeed at this 
because they are completely trapped in their own wants and desires. They start from the assumption that the people they are appealing to have a selfless interest in helping them. They talk as if their needs mattered to these people, who probably couldn't care less. Sometimes they refer to larger issues, a great cause, or grand emotions, such as love and gratitude. They go for the big picture when simple, everyday realities would have much more appeal. What they do not realize is that even the most powerful person is locked inside needs of his own, and that if you make no appeal to his self-interest, he merely sees you as desperate or, at best, a waste of time. A key step in the process is to understand the other person's psychology. Is he vain? Is he concerned about his reputation or his social standing? Does he have enemies you could help him vanquish? Is he simply motivated by money and power? When the Mongols invaded China in the 12th century, they threatened to obliterate a culture that had thrived for over 2,000 years. Their leader, Genghis Khan, saw nothing in China but a country that lacked pasturing for his horses, and he decided to destroy the place leveling all its cities, for it would be better to exterminate the Chinese and let the grass grow. It was not a soldier, a general, or a king who saved the Chinese from devastation, but a man named Yelu Chu Tsai. A foreigner himself, Chu Tsai had come to appreciate the superiority of Chinese culture. He managed to make himself a trusted advisor to Genghis Khan and persuaded him that he would reap riches out of the place if, instead of destroying it, he simply taxed everyone who lived there. Khan saw the wisdom in this, and did as Chu Tsai advised. When Khan took the city of Kaifeng after a long siege and decided to massacre its inhabitants, as he had in other cities that had resisted him, Chu Tsai told him that the finest craftsmen and engineers in China had fled to Kaifeng, and it would be better to put them to use. Kaifeng was spared. Never before had Genghis Khan shown such mercy, but then it really wasn't mercy that saved Kaifeng. Chu Tsai knew Khan well. He was a barbaric peasant who cared nothing for culture, or indeed for anything other than warfare and practical results. Chu Tsai chose to appeal to the only emotion that would work on such a man, greed. Self-interest is the lever that will move people. Once you make them see how you can in some way meet their needs or advance their cause, their resistance to your requests for help will magically fall away. At each step on the way to acquiring power, you must train yourself to think your way inside the other person's mind, to see their needs and interests, to get rid of the screen of your own feelings that obscure the truth. Master this art, and there will be no limits to what you can accomplish. <laughs>